who drops out of school these days, especially in post-war times. You're a disgrace to our family's legacy. Don't pretend you belong here as my son's wife. Invited with my husband to my sister-in-law's wedding, I face my mother-in-law's academic snobbery. She looked down on me, a dropout with disdain, treating me as less than human. Her words cut deep. You don't belong here. Just leave. With a forceful tug, she ripped the corsage from my chest, crushing it underfoot. Little did she know, her cruel words would set off a chain reaction within the family. I'm now 28, married and working. My husband and I both hold jobs. I made the decision to leave school in ninth grade, though my resume bears the mark of dropout. Life's twists led me to a career in an international company. Through work connections, I met my husband, and we built a life together. While every member of my husband's family boasts a strong education influenced by my mother-in-law's academic standards, my husband and sister-in-law never flaunted their schooling or judged others by it. They accept and support me wholeheartedly. Yet, a rift remains. My mother-in-law and I clash fundamentally. Our values differ and understanding seems distant. Yet, despite everything, I remain deeply in love with my husband and committed to our life together. I've strived to navigate my relationship with my mother-in-law without conflict. But she's different. When she dislikes someone, she doesn't just ignore them. She goes out of her way to belittle them. Once at a family dinner to which we were invited, I discovered a separate meal prepared just for me. This should be sufficient for a dropout like you, my mother-in-law remarked icily. I can't fathom anyone dropping out these days. Perhaps you come from a time when women were told education wasn't necessary. In front of me sat only a bowl of green bean soup and a small serving of mashed potatoes. You should be grateful for what you have, my husband unexpectedly interjected, clearly taken aback. You've clearly prepared to disappoint my wife first and then surprise her later, he remarked knowingly, aware of his mother's intentions toward me. Before leaving home, he had reassured me, I'll always have your back. Sister-in-law arrived a bit late, apologizing cheerfully as she laid out the dishes she had brought. I've brought some exquisite delicacies that cost $11,000 per gram. I wanted to share them with you, sister-in-law, and of course, with you too, mom. It became clear to me what my husband meant by protecting me. Mother-in-law, unable to conceal her disdain, looked visibly bored, yet she wasn't one to concede easily. Speaking of which, my nephew has been accepted into Montori Schools of America. I wonder if you, as a dropout, can grasp the caliber of such an institution. Having a mother like you must make one anxious about their child's future prospects. She launched into a detailed description of the prestigious preschool's pathway to college, its partnerships with renowned international schools, and its notable alumni in academia and politics. Her speech seemed rehearsed, and she seemed satisfied as she concluded. So what do you think? She knew I would it be familiar with such institutions in my own country, deliberately setting me up to stumble. People used to say that dropping out was a national disgrace, remarked my father-in-law, usually quiet but choosing to remain silent in the face of my mother-in-law's harsh words. Well, he can't, he added softly. My sister-in-law, unfazed by our mother-in-law's boasting, spoke at her own pace. Occasionally, she'd compliment the food and glance at me for confirmation. I mostly tuned out my mother-in-law's monologue. Meanwhile, my husband persistently offered her more wine, perhaps hoping to keep her occupied. Leaning over, my sister-in-law whispered in my ear, I'm sorry, just endure it a little longer. Visiting their house always leaves me drained, but I don't want to concern my husband or sister-in-law, so I put on a facade of enjoyment. Perhaps I'm simply a bit slow to adapt. Mother-in-law is resolute and firmly believes in her own opinions. Both my husband and sister-in-law understand that openly challenging her is futile. Our only choices are to endure her or mentally disconnect. Yet I'm uncertain how much longer I can keep this up. I endure her hurtful comments, especially since her mistreatment extends beyond occasional visits. Often, she shows up unannounced at our home. Here's my son's favorite, she'll declare, adding, it's not for someone like you who dropped out. She brings gifts but never includes anything for me. Once, she insisted I fetch a specific brand of tea she prefers, only to leave before I returned. It's bearable when my husband is present, but when I'm alone with her, I feel trapped. She'll spend hours lecturing me about the accomplishments of the well-educated and implying that those with less education diminish our. I never disclose these incidents to my husband when he's away. I don't want to burden him further with worries. 
Then one day, an invitation arrives politely announcing sister-in-law's arranged marriage to her longtime boyfriend. Sister-in-law and I share a close bond. She considers me a sister and we often enjoy shopping and dining together. Her invitation filled me with joy, and I gladly accepted. On the wedding day, I arrived early at the venue for a hair appointment, before my husband. To my surprise, mother-in-law was already there. Spotting me, her expression turned furious. I braced myself, anticipating criticism about my attire or makeup, and greeted her calmly. Instead, she loudly exclaimed, Why is someone like you even here? Her words echoed through the venue, exposing her academic elitism even at such a solemn occasion. In the midst of numerous guests, she seemed determined to highlight my educational background as an issue. Our family is esteemed for its education. Everyone here is accomplished, except you, who dropped out. How can you sit among us? Her words cut through the air, carrying the weight of her disdain. My daughter has even expressed regret for considering you a sister. She only wanted your brother here and hoped you wouldn't show up, she added, her tone sharp and unforgiving. Please remove that tacky corsage, she demanded, then forcibly tore it from my chest and crushed it underfoot. It had been a gift for my husband, chosen with care. Shocked and hurt, I turned away from my mother-in-law and hurried out of the venue. I ran until my heels threatened to give way, finally stopping to catch my breath on a nearby bench. As I scrolled through messages and photos with my supportive sister-in-law, I tried to steady my emotions. Reflecting on her sincerity, I felt ashamed for briefly dubbing her amidst my mother-in-law's cruelty. I resolved to adjust my approach and return to the venue to partake in celebrating my sister-in-law's joyful occasion. However, upon my return, my mother-in-law's harsh words greeted me. How dare you return with that dropout face? Do you understand what dropout means? There's no place for dropouts here. With a forceful kick, she knocked over the chair bearing my name in the bride's family section. Tension hung thick in the air as her behavior unnerved everyone, particularly since the majority of guests had already gathered. I remained composed and took my seat in the guest section. Unbelievable. Are you out of your mind? Well, maybe expecting a dropout to grasp social norms is asking too much, she sneered, sparking derisive laughter around her. Just then, my visibly flustered brother-in-law hurried in. She's the president of a key business partner we work closely with. We have a strong professional relationship, and I personally invited her, he declared emphatically over the commotion. Actually, I had contemplated pursuing education until my final year primarily to fulfill my parents' expectations of high school graduation. Yet in this modern era, it didn't align with my aspirations. Why attend high school without dreams or ambitions? What if my presence denied someone else a chance? Wrestling with these thoughts, a caring teacher intervened and suggested I explore the world. With their support, I prepared to leave the U.S., embarking on a journey that would reshape my perspective. In the U.S., merely taking the gap year can sometimes be seen as a mark of failure in life. However, I discovered that this isn't universally true. Around the world, learning can occur at any time, and formal schooling isn't the sole pathway to knowledge. I came to understand that languages aren't merely acquired but necessitated by the act of learning as required. I found fulfillment in living and working in diverse environments, cherishing cultures that valued individuals beyond their educational background or nationality. I returned to the U.S. briefly at my parents' request but soon resumed my travels between the U.S. and other countries. Discovering my passion, I established a U.S. subsidiary for a foreign company at the age of 23, five years ago. My company became a significant business partner with my sister-in-law's husband's company. When my sister-in-law extended a wedding invitation, it sparked a debate over whether to invite me as a family member of the bride or a business partner of the groom. My brother-in-law was unaware of the tension between me and my mother-in-law, but my sister-in-law knew better. She anticipated her mother's tendency to assert herself, even at her own wedding. Understanding this, we agreed on a unique solution to invite me from both perspectives. If I could sit with the bride's family, that would be ideal. If not, I was prepared to stand my ground. This was the mindset I carried into the wedding. My sister-in-law shared my sentiments. We were both determined to make our mother-in-law reconsider her academic snobbery. It was a strategy we had devised together, and it unfolded exactly as we had envisioned. Amidst the commotion, my brother-in-law anxiously questioned, are you intent on damaging my business? His family members and business associates gathered around, puzzled by the unfolding drama. 
it appeared clear that my mother-in-law harbored strong negative feelings towards me, if my presence was causing such disturbance. Also for all ties immediately, I declared firmly. Ah, so you finally understand. Then kindly end your relationship with my son at once, my mother-in-law retorted sharply. Very well. If my husband desires it, I will comply. However, please remember that severing all ties includes the business relationship with your daughter's future husband. My mother-in-law remained unruffled by my statement, seemingly believing she had no association with a CEO's wife. However, my brother-in-law and his family appeared visibly distressed. Some bowed deeply, offering apologies to me and urging. Some urged me to reconsider while others confronted my mother-in-law, holding her accountable. Amidst the uproar, my sister-in-law arrived and was incensed when she learned of the situation. I was exasperated by my mother-in-law's academic elitism, but I hadn't realized her ignorance about business operations. No matter how educated someone is, if they can't apply that knowledge, they're worthless to society, she explained to everyone, highlighting the potential fallout of losing crucial business partnerships. My brother-in-law vented, Do you want to destroy the livelihoods of hundreds of employees? Are you the harbinger of doom? My presence is ruining all happiness here. Leave and never return. I no longer consider you my mother, declared my sister-in-law. I have no plans to leave my wife. If anyone's cutting ties, it's me with you, Clyde, my husband added firmly. She's not involved. Get her out of here. With that, my mother-in-law was escorted out of the venue. Despite the dramatic start, my sister-in-law's wedding and reception proceeded smoothly. It was an unconventional prelude, but the ceremony itself was beautiful, filled with joy and celebration. The newlyweds postponed their honeymoon due to work commitments but wasted no time addressing the issue with my mother-in-law. They took legal action through a lawyer formally severing ties. Meanwhile, my brother-in-law's family also sued her, viewing her reckless behavior as a threat. My husband and I documented our decision to cut ties, outlining conditions that included no contact or approach, which our lawyer conveyed formally. Despite this, our business relationship with my brother-in-law's company remained unaffected. Upon hearing of these developments, my mother-in-law attempted to reconcile with the newlyweds but resorted to stalking them instead. She even appeared uninvited at their workplace, prompting security to remove her. Eventually, law enforcement had to intervene. Meanwhile, my usually quiet father-in-law took decisive action. Content after attending his daughter's wedding, he began preparing for divorce. When my mother-in-law returned home after an absence, he broke the news to her, provided some money, and asked her to leave. He had endured my mother-in-law's behavior in hopes that she would change, but witnessing his children's frustration, he realized he had reached his limit. Giving her money and sending her away was his last gesture of kindness, though she quickly wasted it. Despite her boasts of education, she had little understanding of the challenges faced by a woman living alone. It wasn't until she experienced it firsthand that she realized the harsh reality. Now reportedly residing in a dilapidated public housing unit, she faces a stark contrast to her previous life. Sometime later, both my sister-in-law and I became pregnant. We moved closer to each other, drawn by community support and welfare benefits. Our family has grown closer than ever. We aspire for our children to grow up in an environment free from prejudice and discrimination. Above all, our greatest wish is for their health and happiness. This is where our story rests for now. My father-in-law visits us regularly, maintaining a supportive presence since our family dynamics shifted. Each day feels perfect and filled with joy in our new life together.